Hola amigos y amigas. Welcome to the small coastal town of Alvarado, situated in the southern part of the Mexican state of Veracruz. A very fun little town with a distinctive Cuban flavor. The people are warm, even for Mexican standards, and they like to have a good time to listen to music, party, eat good food, and just be happy. And I actually had an adventure relating to this that I'll talk about later on in the video. So prior to Alvarado uh, receiving a Cuban community and even prior to its Spanish colonialization, there were a few different indigenous groups in the area. There was a Olmec population as well as Totonaca that lived in the area and that built an artificial wall of clay and oyster shells known as El Cerro de las Conchas which ran parallel to the nearby lagoon of Alvarado and this served as a dike which prevented flooding. And this is related to Atlizintla, which meant next to abundant water. And this is the name this uh, settlement received during the expansion of the Aztec Empire. And then in the 16th century, Alvarado was quote-unquote founded by the Spaniards. In 1518, Pedro de Alvarado arrived in Altlizintla and named the town and river after himself. Then in 1563, Juan de Sahagún built the port of Alvarado which was later used for transport, transporting food to other countries. So we're now taking a look at the Alvarado Municipal Palace, which was uh, inaugurated in January of 1900, the year 1900. And today, it houses the town hall offices of the municipality. And it is one of the more uh, iconic parts of Alvarado. Another being the Alvarado Bridge and Boardwalk. The boardwalk began to be built in 1948 and it is currently an emblematic place for locals and visitors. It's a meeting point for coffee, dinner, or for a walk while you enjoy the sunset. The Alvarado Bridge opened in 1963 the gate of the Sotavento region to the southeast of the country. It has two viewpoints at the beginning and, at, and exit of the bridge. Its construction is one of the uh, prideful points of the Alvaradeños, or the people living in Alvarado. Common professions for these people include the
the production of coffee, fruits, and sugar, although the economy is primarily based on fishing and farming. Alvarado has a few um, traditional festivals and dances. One of these special dates for Alvarado is Easter, which runs from Sunday, April 5th to Saturday, April 11th. Another is during the month of May when the Feast of the Cross is held which consists of placing crosses on construction sites and on the last Sunday of May they're taking to a local park where there's Harosho dance contest, Wapangos and cultural other cultural events are held as well as different games. During October various celebrations are held October 15th is the civic festival that commemorates the heroic feat in which the Yankee flotilla was rejected by a group of patriots in Fort Santa Teresa. And on the first Sunday in October, parades are held. Among other activities, in honor of the Virgin, uh, Virgin del Rosario, patron saint of the place. So even though Alvarado is a pretty small town, after having done a tour of the place, I was getting pretty hungry. And this is where the adventure that I teased earlier begins. I saw a small place that was like a comedor and I saw there was lots of people there so that's usually a good sign. I walk in and I asked them if I could sit down. There was only like one little spot left and they said, yeah, sure. Then I asked them if they have anything, any food. Then a woman tells, tells me no servicio, which means we're not open. I said, okay, yeah. I start getting up to leave and then one guy says, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. Sit down, we'll make something. I was like, okay, sure. And they made me a delicious plate of shrimp. So I was given a plate of shrimp, which were doused in a very sweet, and unique sauce that I don't think I'd ever tasted before and it was very delicious. Perhaps a homemade recipe or, or something of a local uh, sauce of the area. Anyways, it was very good and uh, I had good conversation with the people um, that were there, that were family and friends, just convening together on the weekend, on the Sunday, I believe. And um, yeah, it was a good time. So I finished my meal and I asked them how much I owed them for the meal and they insisted that it was on the house. Uh, which, you know, I tried to give them something but they didn't want, didn't want it. And, um, you know, I accepted their generous yeah. offer. So we be, continued talking for a while about, um, I was asking them about the town of Alvarado and they said they really enjoyed it. They enjoyed the people here even after having lived in other places. Um, that they, they always liked coming back here because the people were so fun and that in fact they were going to a party uh, later on and invited me to come with them. Which I thought sounded like a great idea. I was really into it. But it was towards the end of the day and it's very hot in Veracruz and I had been putting on sunscreen and stuff like that so I definitely wanted to go for a shower. So I told them, um, they said they were going in like about an hour. So I said, okay, well I'm gonna go back to my hotel, I'm gonna shower and I'm gonna come back uh, here to the uh, restaurant or comedor where we were eating. 
So uh, I go back quickly to my hotel, I shower quickly, um, I go to the store, I grab a six pack of Victoria's to not show up empty handed, and I walk back to where I thought the Commodore was, but it turns out it wasn't there. And then I realized that I made the stupid mistake of not getting anybody's phone number um, or WhatsApp number or even writing down the address or saving it on my map. So I figure, well, it's a small town. It can't be that far. So I look around and I, I, I'm walking the streets here with the, the six pack in the hand uh, and some people notice that I, I look kind of lost and you know they uh, they uh, offer help and I tell them that I'm looking for this green comedor called um, called comida sana which means healthy food at least that's what I kind of remember it saying on the uh, building where where they were and no one named, seemed to to know the place um, some People said, oh yeah, uh, conheci una casa verde, which is a greenhouse, and they were telling me to go there, and I was walking there, and it wasn't that. And I mean, I felt like I walked through the whole town, uh, at times jogging, kind of looking crazy with a six pack of beer in hand. Um, you know, someone who was really a fish out of water there. And, um, you know, people were eager to help me out, um, but. Ultimately, I, I never found them again, and I felt really bad that uh, they were maybe waiting for me there at the restaurant. Um, hopefully, not for too long, because um, yeah, I, I never ended up finding them, and I, I felt really bad about it um, that they were maybe waiting for me, and also that I was really looking forward to this uh, this fiesta in uh, Alvarado, which I think would have been a good time, but unfortunately, uh, it never happened. But um, the bright side is that because I didn't go to bed super late, I ended up uh, going to bed early and getting up early to go see the neighboring town of Tlacotalpan, um, which is a Pueblo Magico in uh, Mexico. And in this area, it's pretty close uh, to Alvarado. Uh, initially, I wasn't planning to go because I had heard that it flooded, but in speaking to the people here in Alvarado said that it was totally fine to visit um, despite the recent flooding so I did end up going to check that out and that will be the next video on the channel so that's Alvarado Veracruz A neat little coastal town in Veracruz as worth visiting but you might visit it even if you weren't planning to do so and that's because there's a bus station here where there's kind of a crossroads between uh, your your next possible destination if you're traveling eastern Mexico by bus which is what I am doing right now and figured I'd stop in for a look and I was not disappointed the only slight asterisk to that is that I had looked on booking.com to see if there's any cheap places to stay I didn't see anything cheap on booking.com so I went on Google Maps and just kind of read the reviews of different hotels and that weren't on booking.com to see which one was cheapest. Found a Target one that was really close to uh, the bus station and a room without AC, so with a uh, ventilator, was 300 pesos, which is about $15.
which might not sound that expensive, but I was just in the city of Veracruz, uh, an hour and a half north from here. And uh, my room there was 160 pesos, so about half. Well. And actually, this is a pretty small town. It only takes you like an hour or so to kind of see what's worth seeing here. So if you can manage to walk around with all your bags, which I don't really recommend doing, kind of makes you a target. Uh, you could just walk around, see the town, then head back to the bus station. Maybe you could go see a hotel or something and pay them a small fee to just look after and keep your stuff while you uh, visit the town until you catch whatever bus you're taking next. So like I mentioned prior, uh, prior to being in Alvarado, I was in the city of Veracruz, which is a very cool city. <laughs> Definitely recommend checking that out. Made some videos of that, of that place. And before that, the capital of Veracruz, Jalapa, which is more inland, kind of in the mountains, with lots of vegetation, is where I was before. And I made quite a few videos of that city, as well as the Pueblo Magicos around it. So the Magic Towns, or, which is a government designation for historic towns that are worth visiting. So you can check that out if you'd like. And after Alvarado here, I'll be continuing my adventures through East Coast Mexico, which is the part of Mexico that I did not visit when I was here the first time three years ago, bicycling through the country. Part of a larger trip, bicycling through Latin America. From Canada to Patagonia, so Southern Argentina and Chile. I also made videos of those adventures and they are all on the same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. And if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I got to see and do, I have that available over on my website, followthehumoftheearth.com, where you can click on the different locations and see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures in Mexico and beyond, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video and then clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.